हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स आई डॉक्टर शमशेर सिंह वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल फार्मा लर्निंग टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू नेक्स्ट जीपैट सीरीज व्हिच विल बी यूजफुल फॉर यू ऑल फॉर प्रिपेयरिंग दी जीपैट एग्जाम नाउ द क्वेश्चंस फॉर जीपैट सीरीज व्हिच आर इंक्लूडेड आर ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑप्शंस सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर द जीपैट सीरीज इज गोआरगम लिमिट्स पोस्ट प्रेंडियल ग्लाइसीमा बाय now guargum which is a polysaccharide the option for this question is inhibiting intestinal brush border a glucosidase activity slowing carbohydrate absorption from intestine releasing in creatine from the intestine and promoting uptake of glucose into the skeletal muscles so these are the four options you can choose which one is a correct option for this question because this is a guargum which limit the post prandial glycemia that mean glucose absorption the correct question answer for this question is slowing carbohydrate absorption from the intestine because it is a polysaccharide and you know that polysaccharide slow down the digestion in the gastrointestinal tract and that's why they slow down the absorption of glucose in the git system now the question next question for this series is hormones that are useful in the diagnosis of endocrine insufficiency include the option for this question is corticotropin releasing hormone cocytotrophin gonadotrophin releasing hormone all of the above now there are four option you can choose the correct answer very fast so the correct answer for this question is all of the above that mean hormones that useful in the diagnosis of endocrine insufficiency include corticotrophic releasing hormone cocytotrophin gonadotrophin releasing hormone and all are the correct answer for this question the next question for the gpad series is melafen melafelin is the drug of choice in melafelin is the drug of choice in the options are leukemia multiple myeloma hodgkin disease and osteosarcoma now to choose the correct answer for this question which will be the correct answer for this question the correct answer is multiple myeloma because this melafen which is a alkylating agent which is useful for the treatment of cancer and it is used for the treatment of multiple myeloma and this is a choice for this particular problem now the next question for this series in the pharma learning channel is rifampicin has gained significance in antitubercular therapy because i will again repeat the question rifampicin has gained significance in anti tuber therapy because the option for this question is it is the cheapest and effective drug as anti tb it is least toxic so suitable for chronic use it potentiate the anti tubercular effect of other drugs and it has reduced the duration of anti tubercular therapy now you can comment the correct answer in the box or you can choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer for this question is it has reduced the duration of anti tubercular therapy because rifampicin metabolites they stay in the blood for a long time and is effective therapy for the treatment of tuberculosis which is very useful drug and you know that there is a another instance with rifampicin and isoniazid that rifampicin never administered with the isoniazid because 
they interfere with the metabolism of each other so this is the second option which i have added in this question now the next question for this series in the pharma learning channel is which of the following cannot be treated with denzol the question is which of the following cannot be treated with denzol the options are endometriosis menorrhea fibri fibrocystic disease and hirsutism the option for this question is endometriosis menorrhea fibrocystic disease and hirsutism you can choose the correct answer for this of question the correct answer for this question is hirsutism so that mean denzol which is used to treat hirsutism and i will add one more question here that phenytoin and valproic acid are reported to cause hirsutism so hirsutism it mean there will be a excessive growth of hair like beard in the female or excessive growth of hair on the body so this is the side effect of phenytoin and valproic acid so denzol cannot you can see be treated with denzol hirsutism you cannot treat with the denzol so you are welcome to pharma learning channel the next question for this series is which of the following is not a good drug target for cardiac arrhythmia the question is which of the following is not a good target for cardiac arrhythmias the options are calcium channel blocker potassium channel activators sodium channel blockers and beta blockers you choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer for this question is potassium channel activators that mean the following potassium channel activator is not a good drug target for cardiac arrhythmia the reason is the potassium channel activator interfere with dad delayed after depolarization and early after depolarization so that mean if you will choose a potassium channel activator they will interfere with dad delayed after depolarization process and can interfere with early after depolarization ultimately this potassium channel activator interfere with the repolarization phase of the cardiac contraction so this is the correct answer for this question you are welcome to this channel pharma learning the next question for this gpad series is select class 2 antiarrhythmic agent from the following the options are diltiazem lidocaine propranolol and virapamil so you choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer for this question is propranolol this is a class 2 antiarrhythmic agent from the following drugs so propranolol which is used as anti hypertensive non specific alpha beta blocker propranolol is also combined with anti thyroid drug to reduce some of the hypertensive influxes and this propranolol in the third category is used as a class 2 antiarrhythmic drug so this is a correct answer for this question so next question for gpad series is identify one of the agent that is considered as class 4 antiarrhythmic agent the option for this question is propafenone diltiazem adenosine and lidocaine now the question was identify one of the agents that is considered as class 4 antiarrhythmic agent the class 4 antiarrhythmic agent is adenosine so which is a part of atp that is energy molecule required for the cardiac contraction the next question for this gpad series is 
which of the following drug act also on phase 3 the option for this question is class a class 1b class 1c none of the above the choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer is class a that mean which of the following drug act also in phase 3 of this cardiac contraction that mean class a agents as antirhythmic drugs next question for this series is select one of the drug that is not useful in cardiac arrhythmia the option for this question is dioxin nephidipine magnesium sulfate and adenosine so choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer for this question which you can assume is dioxin select one of the drug that is not useful in cardiac arrhythmia you know that dioxin itself a narrow therapeutic index drugs and if you will use a dioxin at a higher dose or a medium dose or initially a challenge for a patient dioxin itself cause arrhythmia in the heart so that mean this dioxin is one of the drug not useful in cardiac arrhythmia it is a drug of congestive heart failure next question for the gpad series is majority of the drug cross blood brain barrier or cross biological membrane primary by the options are weakly basic drugs weakly acidic drugs strong electrolytes and non-polar drugs you can choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer for this question is weakly basic drugs that mean the drugs which are weakly basic in nature they cross biological membrane primarily because you know that when a drug will be weakly basic it will not easily ionize at the earlier stage and the acidic drugs are easily ionized you know many of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin acyclophenic diclofenic are acidic drugs and they are easily ionized that's why their t half is less that's why their analgesic effect lasts for a less time so this is the correct answer for this question you are welcome to pharma learning series next question for this gpad series is the duration of action of a drug depends dependent of its it depends on the following options are plasma and tissue binding metabolism tubular filtration and secretion and all of the above the correct answer you can choose for this question the correct answer for this question is all of the above that mean the duration of action of a drug in the body depends upon plasma and tissue binding metabolism and tubular filtration you know the drug which are having high protein binding they show long term action in the body i will give you one of the example dizepam and other dizepam category drugs show a maximum protein binding which is around 95 to 96 percent so that mean the drugs which show more protein binding having a good metabolism and tubular filtration are having a duration of long action in our body so the next question for this gpad series is the rate of drug absorption is greatest in the rate of drug absorption is greatest in the options are small intestine large intestine stomach and liver choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer is small intestine the reason behind most of the drugs which are basic and weakly basic drugs they absorb from the intestine and acidic drug absorbs from the stomach side so acid repel acid weak repel 
base repel the base. So more absorption, you can say it is approximate 67% of the drug, they are showing better absorption from the small intestine. So the next question in the Pharma Learning GPAD series is, which of the following is recognized effect of nitric oxide? Which of the following recognize the effect of nitric oxide? The options are bronchoconstriction, constipation, inhibition of acute graft rejection, and pulmonary vasodilation. You choose the correct answer. The correct answer for this question is pulmonary vasodilation. You know that nitric oxide which is formed, there are three types of nitric oxide, E nose, N nose, I nose. I nose mean inducible nitric oxide, E nose endothelial in the blood vessel, N mean in the neurons. So that mean this is I nose inducible nitric oxide which is responsible for pulmonary dilation because nitric oxide inhibit your enzyme guanyl cyclase and reduce the level of you can say energy at that particular point and inhibit the smooth muscle contraction. So it inhibit the GTP formation thereby cause dilation of your pulmonary tract. So the next option question for this GPAD series, opioid analgesic provide a symptomatic relief of, the options are pain, cough, diarrhea, all of the above. You choose the correct answer very fastly or comment in the box. The correct answer for this question is all of the above, you know that opioid they relieve pain by opioid receptor activation. Opioid was pre are used in cuff, you know, thorax and many other syrups. They are having a cuff suppressant property and they are used for the diarrhea because they relax the GIT tract and all of the options are correct for this question. Now the next question for the GPAD series is, A desired clinical response may be delayed, altered or blocked by. Options are a drug that does not go into its solution, a drug that does not get to its site of action, a abnormal pharmacogenetic, all of the above. Choose the correct answer for this question. The correct answer for this question is all of the above. It means if you know that clinical response can be delayed, altered or blocked by either your drug is not present in the blood, either your drug is not converted into its metabolite and either due to some genetic variations, your drug is not effective at the active site. I will give you example, levodopa is not equally effective worldwide. So that's why somewhere used levodopa, somewhere used levodopa carbidopa and somewhere used levodopa carbidopa and tachypone. So this is the correct answer that all of the options are correct. The next question for this GPAD series is Suramin is antagonist of DASH receptor. The Suramin is the antagonist at that particular receptor. The options are Purines, somatostatin, neuropeptide Y, and neurotensin. Choose the correct answer for this question. The correct answer for this question is purine antagonist. You know purine which are a part of DNA and purine they are responsible for the uric acid formation. So suramin is an antagonist at purine receptors. The next question for this GPAD series on pharma learning is the use of nitrous oxide to relieve the pain of surgery was performed by the options are Heroswell, Coraswell, Humphrey Davy, 
William Morton, none of the above. The use of nitrous oxide to relieve the pain of surgery was by Horace Wells, Humphrey Davy, and William Morton, none of the above. You choose the correct answer for this. The correct answer for this question is Humphrey Davy was the scientist who used nitric oxide to relieve the pain of surgery and due to this reason that particular death of that particular scientist has been reported and this was the scientist who used this nitric oxide for the relief of pain because you know that nitric oxide is a dilator so that's why he was thinking that dilation could be responsible for slow downing the brain stimuli so this is a correct answer for this question the next question for this series is gray baby syndrome is associated with the options are chloramphenicol gentamicin tetracycline and ciprofloxacin choose the correct answer for this question the correct answer is chloramphenicol you know that chloramphenicol that is responsible for changing hemoglobin to methemoglobin and once the hemoglobin in the rbcs of the baby is changed with the methemoglobin it give a blue color to the body and that blue color is responsible for bluish gray body syndrome in the body so this is the property of the chloramphenicol so it is avoided in the small children now the next question and the last question for the gpad series in the formal learning channel is which of the following drug produces diarrhea as one of the important side effect the options are linezolate clindamycin vancomycin ciprofloxacin you choose the correct answer very fastly the correct answer for this question is clindamycin clindamycin cause diarrhea as one of the side effect because whenever you administer clindamycin it alter your git motility and is responsible for producing diarrhea in the patient so you all of you are welcome to our pharma learning channel and you can get a lot of question in the coming lecture you all are welcome thank you very much